I had a couple approach me this week who want to do a wedding next summer, and I'll ask a couple what their faith background is, and the bride to be is grew up in the Roman Catholic Church, has now started coming to an Episcopal Church, and she's comfortable with this denomination. And the groom grew up in the Episcopal Church, was baptized in the Episcopal Church, but has since uh, stopped attending and just doesn't really go to church and doesn't really have any kind of belief system right now. And I pressed him on that, only to find out kind of more what he believed. And um, he was kind of hesitant to engage with me because even though I didn't have my collar, I didn't know what I do for a living. <laughs> I was probably a salesperson of some sort. <laughs> and I said, no, really, I'm not trying to pin you down. I just want to know, you know what is it that you do believe? And he kind of struggled. He said, you know, if I was really pressed, I don't know what I would say. What I believe about a higher power, about God, about spirituality, I don't know what I would say. And I said, well, would you know what to say if I asked you what you don't believe? He said, maybe, that might be a little easier. And I said, well, you've got some time to think about it. This might be a fruitful exercise for you to kind of get some bearings on where you are. I think for all of us who want to lead a spiritual life, we always have to wrestle with that. What do we believe and what don't we believe? I think that those are good questions for all of us to ask any point in our spiritual lives. So this morning what I want to talk about is something you've probably never heard a sermon on. Uh, if, you've had, if you've had, you're probably older than me. Uh, it's a sermon on the creed. Have you heard a sermon on the creed before? Pat has. <laughs> you've been around a little bit longer than me, Pat, so <laughs> you've got some errors to, to So listen, the, the creed is something that comes after the sermon. And oftentimes we wonder, why do we say it in church? Maybe we do. But I used to work for a guy who, in his church, he took the creed out of the service. And the vestry asked him during a meeting, they said, why did you take the creed out? And he said, well, really three reasons. One, we're trying to keep the service under an hour long. So we're trying to cut time, cut time where we can. Uh, he said, the second part is that we have a lot of newcomers. And for newcomers to the church, if they're new to Christianity, the creed for them is a stumbling block. They don't know what it means. They don't know who these people are that the creed talks about. They don't understand why it was written and why they have to say it. And for those who are coming from different denominations, some of them are saying it with their fingers crossed behind their backs. And some of them are just kind of mouthing through it. They don't really believe it all, so they're not really sure whether they should say anything. Some of them actually will say some of it and then remain silent for other parts of it. He said, so it's a real stumbling block for people. And finally, it's the most rote part of the service. And it's the part that we know backwards and forwards. And it comes after the most creative part of the service, typically, which is a sermon. And so it really doesn't fit in the liturgy. So that's why I took it out. And the vestry said, well, maybe it's an opportunity for you to instruct the congregation on what the creed is, what it isn't, and what it means, and why we say it. So briefly, I want to share with you a little bit of the history of what it is. And really what the creed is, is a statement of belief. And it comes from the ancient rule of faith, or regala, regala fide, which grew up in ancient Christianity. So Christ died, he left his apostles behind. You with me so far? The apostles taught things that Jesus taught. And they would be able to have first-hand experience of Jesus' teachings and what he believed. So the apostles would teach these things, and those are the core of what became the ancient rule of faith. And this rule of faith was passed down through communities the first 200 years of Christianity. And these rules of faith would change from one community to another. So one community might believe something about God, and another community might believe something a little bit different about God, but there was enough in common that they still shared a rule of faith. And as happened in Christianity, as it got bigger and bigger, the rules started getting bent more and more, until you had communities that were really, really far away from what the original teachings were. So ultimately, the Christian church, what it had to do is it had to really coalesce its rule of faith. It had to really come together and say, these are the central core teachings. Right? And you'll notice in the creed that it says a lot of things that it doesn't make sense. You notice this? When you say the creed, some things just don't make sense. 
The reason that is is because they had a whole a lot of different groups in tension with one another. So for example, there was a group back in the day called the Docetists. And the Docetists were people that believed that Jesus was really nothing more than a ghost. Jesus was pure spirit. There really wasn't any humanity in Jesus, and that's how he was able to re be resurrected. Jesus was a pure spirit. Now on the other side, you had a group of people called the Adoptionists. And the Adoptionists believed that God really, really liked Jesus. So when Jesus was baptized, God adopted him as God's son. And raised him and then brought him on the cross and, and resurrected him. Some adoptionists even thought that God adopted Jesus when he was on the cross and then resurrected him. Right? But either way, the Docetists believed that Jesus wasn't really fully human. And the adoptionists didn't really believe that Jesus was fully God. So what the creed does, what the ancient rule of faith does, is it holds those two things in tension. How? By saying that Jesus was both fully human and fully divine. Now who can explain that to you? We can't. We can't explain it. And the creed doesn't try to explain it either. It just says, this is what we believe. We hold it intentionally. And sometimes it doesn't make sense. So the creed was really written, written to keep certain groups in line with what the basic Christian tenets were at the time, right? It was also kind of written to say, hey, you're not with us if you can't get on board with these beliefs. We're a little bit different now. Because I think what the creed does for us is it allows us to ask some questions about our own beliefs. And how many of you, when we recite the creed, as we will do in a few minutes, take time after one of the phrases and say, what does that mean? Or how many of you, when we say one of the phrases, maybe the one about the Virgin Mary, say, oh, I'm not really sure about that. How many of you, when we say a phrase in the creed, any, any phrase, say to yourself, you know, that makes me ask a question about this. And then it kind of flutters from your mind as it does mine from time to time. Well, I think the creed is more actually about the questions than the answers. If you are looking to the creed to answer lifelong questions about your faith, I'm not sure that you're going to be satisfied. But I think that if you look to the creed as a resource to ask questions from, maybe as a, a, a jumping off point, of, you know, maybe a, a diving board, then it can be a wonderful thing. Now, C.S. Lewis talked about the creed not as a destination, but as a waypoint along the way. So all of us are walking with Jesus. All of us are walking this path, walking the spiritual life, trying to make sense of things, trying to do the right thing, right? Let that creed be almost like a GPS. Because if the creed is here, if the creed is in a certain location, a certain fixed point, Think of it as a buoy in the harbor. You might be over here, or you might be over there, right? But think about it this way. Where were you 10 years ago? Where were you before you had kids? Were you over there? Were you closer? Or were you further away? Where were you when your spouse died? Were you further away? Could you, could you hear the, the bell? I think that's a really instructive point about the creed. That we can use it as a measuring stick almost to say, where am I in regards to where the church is? You know, what I say to people who cross their fingers behind their backs when they say the creed, here's what I say. I say, the creed is in plural form. It says, we believe. Because really what it says is, this is what the church holds to be true. None of you are given a quiz when you come up for communion about the creed. No, no. No. I'm not checking to see who is not in the words and who's actually saying it. And I'm instructing the ushers to no longer look and see whose fingers are crossed behind their backs. <laughs> That's not the point of the creed. Don't use 
use it as a measuring stick to say how strong my faith is, but rather to say, where are my beliefs in relation to the church? Right? And just let it be that. Because here, we, we don't check cards like that. Right? That is where the church has been for years. And I think it can be used not only as a marker, as a buoy, as an anchor even, but also as a tremendous jumping off point for questions. What do you believe about God? What do you believe about Jesus and the Holy Spirit? Why do you think God created us? The creed says one thing, you might say something different, and that's okay. And ultimately, the creed is nothing if we don't act on it. Our actions are really the, the dictative measure of what we believe. And we can say, and we can talk a good game here at church on Sunday, but if we're not putting our beliefs and our creeds into actions and deeds in the outside world, then really they're just words. So, I thank God for the creed, and I have not always felt this way. But I've come to understand the creed as something that can really benefit our spiritual lives. That can really share with us the saints who have gone before and what they held to be true and lovely. And the creed for us can point to something where we might be headed or where we might be coming from. But either way, the creed is an indispensable tool for your spiritual life. Amen. Amen. Amen.